Welcome to this edition of Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. Today we're in Philippians chapter 3, and we resume our study in verse 18. So get your Bible, open it up to Philippians 3.18. We'll begin in just a minute. Remember, the Scripture Verse by Verse website is found at thebibleversebyverse.com. There you can study all of God's Word with me using my audio Bible messages for a complete series going through the whole Bible verse by verse. All you have to do is choose, click, and listen from four complete series going through the whole Bible. That's at the Bible verse by verse dot com. Let's pray. And Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, let's Let's begin our reading in, uh, in verse 17, even though we covered this last time. I want to begin this, in this verse. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them who walk, even as ye have us for an example. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you, even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, the enemies of Christ that Paul refers to right here are those who call themselves Christians but have no real desire to be godly. So they misrepresent Christ. That's why they're his enemies. They misrepresent Christ and therefore they are doing more harm than good to the cause of Christ. And that's because they turn people off to Christ with their lack of holiness with their, added, with their worldly mindset, which always revolves around selfishness. And it does a real disservice to Christ for people to call themselves Christians and live like the world. You may think that you're cool in the eyes of the world by living like them. No, you're not. And they're not impressed. Certainly Jesus is not impressed. I know, I know God's not impressed because look at what he says in verse 19 whose end is destruction, whose God is their appetite, whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. You can take this, mark it down, and take it to the bank. People who are worldly, Christians, who so-called Christians, who live like the world, are fleshly, as Paul says here, and their end is destruction. Their God is their appetite or their belly, their lust, their desires. They can call themselves Christians all day long if they want to, but they're not. They got a different God self, their appetite, satisfying their flesh in one form or another. There's a whole system of this type of so-called Christian in the world today. It's called the Word of Faith movement. They live to satisfy their flesh, their greed. It has nothing to do with Jesus, with the real Jesus, nothing in the world to do with the rightly dividing the word of God. The teachers are greedy. They want money from the people. The people are greedy, and that's why they give to these liars and promote their lies because they think they're going to get a kickback, something that will satisfy their flesh. And they can put a pious spin on it all, all they want to. Well, we just want to use that money to further the kingdom. Baloney, you're not furthering the kingdom to begin with. You're, you are misrepresenting Jesus Christ, both you preachers who preach that nonsense and you people who support them. God doesn't like them. You say, Moret, you're too strong. Well, people who take pride in things that they should be ashamed of, such as what I've just spoke about, and people who live to satisfy their appetites, their flesh, instead of pleasing God, and those who love the things of this world, more than they love God, more than they love truth, which describes these people to a T. They're headed for destruction. That means they're headed for hell, according to this verse, according to God. They are headed for hell. And they may say that they are Christians, but their form of so-called Christianity is warped, is wrong, it's polluted, false with a lifestyle like that they can call themselves Christians all they want the only people who will believe them are other greedy people 
but their profession will ring hollow in the eyes of others who know the word of God. 20. <clears throat> Paul says, For our citizenship is in heaven, from which also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. A Christian may live on earth, but their real home is in heaven. And this is the reason why their hearts, the heart of a real Christian, will not be consumed with the things of this world to the point where what God wants and God in general is secondary. A real Christian will live in this world. You have no choice. But will live their life with eternity in mind, with Jesus in mind, because that's where their citizenship is. It's in heaven. And that's where their home is. And that's where their heart is. It's not on the things of this world. A real Christian will not be consumed with materialism. I'm sorry if that shakes you up, but I'm not sorry because hopefully it'll, it'll hit you alongside the head and cause you to repent while you still have time. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our lowly body, that it may be fashioned like the glorious body, like his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. You know, we do have a great eternity coming, those of us who belong to Jesus Christ. Christianity is all about sacrificing the now, living by faith, giving up the things of this world if need be, certainly not living for the things of this world, which means you're probably not going to accumulate the things that the world has in favor of living for Jesus Christ and probably being unpopular if you live that way and certainly being unpopular if you preach the truth like I am doing today and as I have been doing for over 36 years old. You don't get many pats on the back when you tell people that they are lost, hell-bound sinners and they need to repent and they can't save themselves and they need to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and die to self. You don't get many pats on the back from people. You don't win the accolades and the applause of the masses by saying that. But true Christians, whatever your calling in life may be, true Christians exchange the things of this world for the things of the next. And it's going to be worth it because he describes a great brand new resurrected body that we're all going to get. And it's going to be just like the Lord Jesus Christ. The one that he had after he was raised. And that's pretty awesome when you think about it. And I like to think about it. Philippians 4. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, and long for my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. The flow of the world is in the direction of sin. And holiness and truth often rubs people the wrong way. And God is saying, don't go along with the crowd when the crowd is being unscriptural. Instead, remain steadfast, dig your heels in, and do what is right. Live for God. Live according to the word of God. Just hang in there. Two, I beseech you, dear, and I beseech Syntyche that they be of the same mind in the Lord. The details that caused the strife of these two ladies are not, are not named, are not really mentioned specifically. Because you know what? They really don't matter to the solution. Eudeus and Syntyche each need to focus on what they must change about themselves, what, what it is about themselves that they need to get in line with the Word of God, they need to focus on what needs to be changed in themselves and not on what they think the other person is doing wrong. They need what God wants them to do to be front and center in their life and they need to trust God to deal with the other person while they themselves as an individual are focused on obeying God themselves. That's the key to getting along is to put Jesus first. The Bible says, as much as it depends on you, live at peace with all people. 
Well, it's not always, it's, it's not always possible. God acknowledges that. But as much as depends on you, you live for Jesus. You do the right thing. You live the truth. You speak the truth. And hopefully the other person will too. And you'll be able to get along. But if not, well, you've done your part. That's what God expects of you. Three, and I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women who labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. In the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, the book of life is there referred to as the Lamb's book of life or Jesus's book of life. If you die in good standing with God through Jesus Christ, then your name will be in that book of life when it is searched at the great white throne judgment and you will be saved because those are the only people who are going to be saved whose names are found in the book of life. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, who helped these women, those women, who labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other, my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. The book of life. You got to get your name in the book of life. And you do that by receiving Christ as Lord and Savior. And as Paul says here, help those whose names are also in the book of life. Christians who are truly Christians, love God, live for God, speak the truth of God's word, they're going to need some encouragement from others who truly know Christ. So Paul is encouraging that right here. Don't encourage lukewarm professing Christians who live like the world. Don't encourage them with your attendance and your support. Support those who are living for Jesus and speaking the truth and are on fire for Jesus. People like you, support them, encourage them. And I love verse 4, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. If we only focus on our circumstances, then we are in big trouble. And we will be up and down like an emotional and spiritual yo-yo, depending on whether good things are happening or bad things are happening in our life at that present time. Those of us who are Christians have a personal connection to our Creator, a wonderful connection to our Creator through the Savior Jesus Christ. And that steadies things out for us. It should steady our emotions out. When we are having fellowship with God, when we can have a measure of joy despite what our circumstances might be, it is because we are focused on Jesus. We are enjoying our fellowship with him and he is number one in our life by far. Verse five. Let your moderation be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. In other words, God is saying, when he says the Lord is at hand, he's saying God is close. He's close. And as soon as we see him, either by his return to earth or by our death, it won't, as soon as we see him, we will know how close he is and has been. Though he's right here with us. And because the Lord is close, because we're so close to seeing him, be good. And this includes not jumping all over those who have offended us. Give these people some grace. And remember, judgment without mercy will be shown to those who are not merciful themselves. The Lord is at hand. We're going to see him real soon. Whether he's returning to us or we are going to be with him in death, he's at hand. It won't be long. So live for him right now. Let's stop. You can study all of God's word with me at the Bibleversebyverse.com. There are four series that you can choose from. Choose, click, and listen to series, the book of the Bible, the section, the chapter. 
If you'd like to be a part of Coffee Break or Scripture Verse by Verse, study, or you can be by praying for me and God's Word. That makes you an immediate part of this ministry. Also, when you take a break from studying with me at thebibleversebyverse.com, you can go to the front page, click the donate button, and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. That also makes you a part of this ministry. So thank you for studying with me, and until next time, Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. So long, everyone.